The elections in Belarus were fake and voting took place in an atmosphere of fear and it is not possible to talk about democratic expression or will. This was stated by State Department Representative Matthew Miller. The regime continues to hold more than 1,400 political prisoners. All independent political figures have either been detained or exiled. All independent political parties were denied registration. Matthew Miller, spokesperson for the United States Department of State, on the U.S. State Department website. Voting to elect deputies to parliament and local councils in Belarus took place without the participation of international observers. It was the first large-scale vote since mass protests in 2020. Many participants of which were arrested and convicted or fled the country. Already on the morning of February the 26th, the Central Election Commission reported that deputies had been elected in all 110 constituencies and announced their names. Most of them are representatives of the party supporting Lukashenko. The vote that took place this weekend was the most politically sterile and the most cleaned up in the entire history of Belarus. In order for a person to run for a particular position, they had to undergo control by the state itself, and those who ran didn't have the opportunity to organize their campaigns. This was all done by government-controlled public organizations, so the results did not surprise anyone. Alexander Lukashenko, who has ruled the country for almost 30 years, said at the polling station the day before that he would run for a new presidential term in 2025. A responsible president will not abandon his people, who followed him into battle. Don't worry, we will do what is necessary for Belarus. In addition, Lukashenko said that Belarusians and Russians had exhausted the limit of revolutions. In fact, this was a reference to the situation in 2020, when there were protests and it became a threat to the regime. Therefore, Lukashenko mentioned the limits of revolution. He is trying to keep the situation in his hands in every possible way, to keep it under personal control and not to allow any manifestations of dissent within the country. The flywheel of oppression is spinning up. The Belarusian authorities announced that they intend to deprive the citizenship of political opponents of Alexander Lukashenko. In the meantime, they are taking away property from those opponents who are in prison or were forced to go abroad. On February the 27th, an auction began in Minsk, where the three-room flat of ex-presidential candidate Valery Tsipkala was put up for sale. In April 2023, the court sentenced the politician in absentia to 17 years in prison. His property was seized. I appeal to people who will want to buy our flat at a reduced price. You must be aware that we will definitely return home and move into the flat built with legally earned money. And we will require you to pay rent for the entire period of usage of our property. Veronika Tsepkalo, wife of Valery Tsepkalo, Current Time reports. This is not the first example of confiscation of property of Belarusian oppositionists. The Minsk flat of blogger Sergei Tikhanovsky, sentenced to almost 20 years in prison, was also to seal the auction in the summer of 2023. The Human Rights Center Vesna told current time that the so-called law and seizure of property had little to do with law, but rather was a response of the Belarusian authorities to the economic and political sanctions imposed by the West against Minsk. Reported by Dana Kolesnik, Yulia Bil, UATV News.